This video will be for problems 34 to 37. So we're going to go ahead and start. It says solve and give exact answers. So in order for us to solve a logarithmic like this, we do notice that we have logarithms on both sides. So we're going to go ahead and compress them to one log on one side and one log on the other side. So if I use my properties, when I'm adding two logs that have the same base, I can write them as one log and plus means I will have to multiply those arguments. And then I can use the inverse properties of logs and exponentials to cancel out the logs on both sides. So the base here is a common base when there's nothing there, which is 10. So if I have a base 10 log, in order for me to use the opposite or the inverse operation, I would have to do a base 10 exponential. So it's going to be log base 10 of x times x plus 6 as my exponent. And then 10 raised to the log base 10 of 16. Now the exponential base 10 and the logarithmic base 10 essentially cancel each other out. So the same thing's going to happen over there. And so all I'm left with is x times x plus 6 equal to 16. And if I distribute my x, I end up with x squared plus 6x equal to 16. This is a quadratic equation, so I do need to get it equal to 0. So this equation will become x squared min or plus 6x minus 16 equal to 0. And I can factor that. x, I will use 8 and 2 since those subtract to give me 6 and they multiply to give me negative 16. Um, the bigger number has to be positive, so let's verify. 8 times negative 2 is negative 16. 8 minus 2 is a positive 6. So that is factored completely or correctly. And then we set each factor equal to 0. So we get x equals negative 8 here. And if I add 2 on both sides, I get x equals to positive 2. Now I did find two solutions. However, we could have what are called extraneous solutions, which means the algebra gives you these as solutions, but they may not necessarily um, check out. Okay? So if I remember the big thing about logs, the arguments and the bases cannot be negative. Now all of these have a base 10 and 10 is positive. So we don't need to verify or check their bases. What we do need to verify or check is the arguments. So if I plug negative eight into this argument right here, I'm gonna have the log of a negative number. And that you simply cannot have, it's undefined. So negative eight is not going to be a solution because it doesn't work in one of the logs. It actually won't work in the second one either, but it, that's not the requirement. The requirement is not that both arguments need to be negative. Just the fact that even one of those arguments is negative makes this an extraneous solution. So it will not be included in my final answer. Next, I need to check the value 2. So if I plug in 2 in here, I'm going to get the log of a positive 2. That's okay. That's good. If I plug 2 in here, I'm going to get log of a positive 8. That's okay. That's good as well. And this is already log of a positive 16. So that one is good as well. So this is going to be my only solution here. So when we write our answers in solution set, it's going to be a brace with a 2 inside. Now let's move on to number 35. So give exact answers. Here we have this. This one is going to require us to use some substitution. So again, whenever you're doing substitution, use the middle variable term, middle variable factor as your substituting variable. So I'm going to use y as my other variable that I'm going to convert it into. And I'm going to use the middle variable 
factor here, which is e to the x. That means that y squared would be e to the x squared, which is e to the 2x. Remember, when you have an exponential raised to an exponent, you just multiply the exponents together. So that means that this term will become y squared, this term will become negative 7y, and the minus 8 stays the same, no substitution required there, or for the zero. Now I can factor this a little bit easier. I will get 1 and 8, and if I want a negative 7, the 8 will have to be negative. So if I set each factor equal to 0, I get y equals negative 1 and y equals a positive 8. But we were not asked to solve for y. So we do have to go back and back sub what y represented. y represented e to the x. So I have e to the x equals negative 1 and e to the x equals 8. Now how do we solve for x? Well, this is an exponential. If we want to get the x out of there, we have to op, uh, apply the opposite operation. So if we have an exponential with base e, we want to apply a log in base e. And logs in base e are what are called the natural logs. So we're going to apply the natural log on both sides. Here, since this is a log of base e, it's going to cancel out with the exponential base e, which means all I'm going to have left is x. However, when I go to try to type in ln of negative 1 in my calculator, look what it says. Error. Because remember, you cannot have a negative argument, right? This is undefined which means I'm not going to get any solutions from this particular factor, okay? But let's try the other one. If we want to get rid of the exponential, we're going to apply a log with the same base and do that on both sides. Here, the will cancel. I'll end up with x. And here, I do have a positive argument this time, and so that will be my solution. Um, all I have to do is leave it in its um, exact form, okay? So when you write your answer in your solution set, it'll just be the ln of 8 inside the braces, and that's it. For number 36, they want us to write the expression as a single logarithm. So what we're going to do is we're going to first get rid of the coefficients using the property that allows us to take that coefficient and apply it as an exponent. So this will become ln of 3x plus 8 cubed plus ln of 5x minus 1 to the 1 half minus ln of x, min x plus 3 raised to the 2. So then now when I'm adding, that puts these two together by multiplying the arguments. And then since I'm subtracting this other one, what it's going to do is it's going to divide the two arguments. So it's going to take this argument and put it at the top of the fraction. And then it's going to take this argument and put it at the bottom of the fraction. Now this test is a multiple choice test. So if this doesn't look like your choices, right, there's one thing that they may have changed. You might start seeing square roots in your answer choices. And that's because if you have a fraction exponent, that is a radical expression. And so you do have to change it into its radical form. A 2 denominator means I'm going to have a square index. And normally you don't need to write the 2 when you're doing a square index. Ultimately what it means is the denominator would go here and the numerator would go there.
And then the last thing you may see is they may clean this up because we never write one exponent, so they're always invisible, right? And when we have square roots, that two index is always invisible. So your final answer, I'm looking at a room, but I'll try to squeeze it in here, should look like 3x plus 8 cubed, and then just the square root of 5x minus 1. And then in the denominator would just be x plus 3 squared. And so this is your final answer. So in number 37, it's asking us to write the expression as a sum and or difference of logarithms. So express the powers as factors. So here we're going to start tearing everything apart. The first thing you want to do is kind of like the opposite of what we did here, okay? The first thing we needed to do was change our radicals to exponent forms, right? So I have a radical here. I want to change that to an exponential. So x, y to the fifth, and then this would be z to the one over three, and then x minus six to the fourth power. The next thing that we did, once we had that power, or the opposite, right? Is we, changed, is we changed the subtraction to a fraction. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our fraction and turn this into a subtraction. Then, in this problem, we split the products up into sums. So I don't have any products here, it's just one factor with an exponent, but I do have three factors there. So I do wanna split up those factors into the sum of logs. And then the last thing we need to do is, before we started putting them together, notice that we had took the exponents and brought them to the front right or bottom to as exponents now what we need to do is the opposite so if we have exponents we need to bring them down as coefficients so we're going to have log x plus a 5 log y plus a one third log z minus a 4 log of x minus 6. and now everything is a sum or difference of logarithms there's no more fractions, no more products in our arguments, and all of our powers are now factors. So this is going to be the final answer.